In this video, we're going to talk about how you identify the conjugation of a verb and then how you form the different stems for those conjugations. So first, let's talk about identifying the conjugation. We have four conjugations, uh, well, five if you include third IO. But the way you're going to identify the conjugation is by first looking at the second principal part. For now, ignore that first word and just look at the second principal part. If you see A-R-E in the second principal part, that means it's first, okay? Second, third, third I-O are a little tricky. We'll come back to those. But the other easy one is if you see I-R-E, that tells you that is a fourth conjugation verb. The tricky thing about second, third, and third I-O is that they all have second principal parts or infinitives that end in E-R-E. -E. Technically, there is a line over the E in second, but that might not show up on all the texts or worksheet worksheets that you might see. So what you do is you see an E-R-E -E there, and then to figure out which one it is, you look back at the first principal part. So if you see E-R-E -E and you look back here and you see E-O for the second, that's going to tell you, for the first principal part, sorry, that's going to tell you it's second. If you see E-R-E, -E, look back and see O, that tells you it is third conjugation. And if you see E-R-E, -E, look back and see I-O, that tells you it's third I-O. So to review, you first look at the second principal part. That might give you enough information to identify it, but if it doesn't, then you look to the first principal part. It's important that you don't start with the first principal part because if you do that, you might see this O and think, oh, I learned that O means it's third when it's actually first. Or you might see this IO and think it's third IO. Okay, so start at the second principal part and then look at the first if you need to. So that's how you identify a conjugation. Now let's talk about how you form the stems. There are two stems that we're going to be using. The first is the present stem, and we'll talk in a little bit about when you use each stem. But to form the present stem, you're first going to need to identify the conjugation of the verb, because that's going to make a difference. For first, second, and fourth conjugation verbs, you're going to take the second principal part and remove the RE. So when we see amo amare, that A-R-E tells us its first conjugation. To form the present stem, we take off the R-E, and that's how we get ama as a present stem. Same thing for dokeo dokere, which is second conjugation. You take off that E-R, sorry, you take off the R-E, and you get doke. Okay, same thing for fourth, audio audire, take off the R-E, and you get the stem audi. Third is a little different. For both third and third IO, instead of taking off the RE, you're gonna take off the ERE. -E. So for lego legere, third conjugation, you don't take off the RE, you take off the ERE, -E, which gives you leg as the present stem. Third IO adds an extra step it adds an I to the stem because it's an I stem verb. So you say capio capere is third IO. So I take off the ERE, -E, but then I need to add an I, and that's how we get copy as the stem of capio capere. So that's how you make the present stem. The perfect stem is the other stem we're going to be using, and it's much easier because the declension doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if it's an irregular verb. The perfect stem is always third principal part minus the I. So if we had amo amare amawi, we take off that I, we go to the third principal part, we take off that I, and our stem is amawa. 
Dokeo doke re dokui. Take the I off the third principal part, and we get doku. Lego legere legi. Doesn't matter that it's third conjugation. They're all the same right now. So you take off the I, and there's your perfect stem. Same thing for capio capere capi. Take off the I, and that's how we get that for our perfect stem. And audio audire audiwi, third principal part, minus the I, gives us that perfect stem. So each verb is going to have two stems, the present stem and the perfect stem. And let's quick talk about when you're going to use them. We have six tenses in Latin, present, imperfect, and future, perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect. I, these can be broken down into two groups. This group here, the present, imperfect, and future, is called the present system. And this group here, the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect, is called the perfect system. And if you remember that, then that becomes pretty clear which stem you use for each tense. The stems in the present, the tenses in the present system all use the present stem. And the tenses in the perfect system all use the perfect stem. So the first three use the present stem and the next three use the perfect stem.